Celebrating 10 years of award-winning car talk, this is the In Wheel Time Car Show. Just ahead, we're going to review our new car of the week, the redesigned 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe. Bet you didn't know it was completely redesigned, did you? No, sir. The cruise-in calendar, uh, matter of fact, we're going to have that count. Actually, you're going to have that. Mm -hmm. uh, this Week in Auto History is also on the agenda. And we'll also have uh, some of the stories making automotive news headlines this week. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show. It's a three-hour extravaganza starting now for Saturday, March 13th, 2021. Howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars. King Conrad DeLong. Jeffrey Zekin in the corner where he needs to be. Don I'm, Armstrong I'm in the booth. here. You're what? I'm in the booth. In the, in the booth. In the booth. What kind of a booth? Uh, photo booth. The photo. <laughs> he's in the photo booth. All Kissing right. booth. There you go. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> you just stay there then. Yeah, I'm not coming over. <laughs> but anyway, we're so glad that you could join us today. Coming to you live from the outskirts of Houston, Texas, in a little place called Sugarland, Texas, in Studio A. Hey. Uh, hey, hey, hey. hey. It's not that it's actually the letter <laughs> A. Well, it, it's oh. actually the A is, is we named it after Armstrong. It's Studio Armstrong. No, it's actually, that a. was that's not correct, but... but it's your story. It, it, you're sticking yeah, to you, you, can, right. you can stick with it if you want to. I'm in to. the booth. Uh, <laughs> when I worked for KPRC Radio, we had studios A, B, C, and D. And uh, I did a lot of work in Studio A, and I thought, well, we'll just, just name it Studio, studio A. Okay. You know, that's the thing about having our own studio. We can name it whatever we want. Well, and we can change the name on, a, on the fly. That's right. Where you do, it seems like every weekend you change the name no. of the network we're in. Yeah. Studio. No, it's the same network. It's just the, it's the producer, I think, that changes. It's the producer that changes. We're in the uh, Smoke and Mirrors network or on it. Yeah. yeah. Studio and Trixie. Really? Oh, okay. Gosh, don't don't get him started. <laughs> He'll there be was, showing us the there was a, there was a woman again. named Trixie in my family mm -hmm. years and years ago. Many been dead a long time, but yeah. At any rate, so we're moving on, <laughs> and we're going to start with our dear friend, Mr. Richard Tomlin, and he is the man behind the company called Apex Auto Works. Of it looks like you're there now, and uh, yep. we're going to we're going to start off by talking about the wrench rally. And um, for those that are just joining us and really don't know about the wrench rally, Richard, why don't you kind of give us a little brief update as to what exactly is the wrench rally? Well, wrench rally was a uh, concept that was kind of stolen from what we had done years ago, playing with lemons and crap can cars. And uh, what we figured out was after. A what kind of cars? <laughs> I was going to say. What kind of what kind of car, what kind of cars did you call them? Crap can cars. Crap, Crap can, can cars. cars. Well, we call like them like we we call them hoopties or you know junk right. cars. Uh, Crap can right. maybe below the hoopty though. I'm thinking. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. So we would buy cars of uh, nominal value. Um, we'd spend a couple of weeks wrenching on them, and you could turn it into a daily driver. Uh, this is kind of like you know the shade tree mechanics flipping cars. And we were looking for a way that we as individuals could give back a little bit to society. Uh, mechanics, it seems to be, we either work on our friends' cars for free or we uh, just give people cash. And I want to do something a little better than that. So we created a gimmick rally that runs over two to three days, depending on where we're going. You buy a car a month, two weeks, maybe a day before the rally. And uh, you take off on this gimmick rally, which has designated waypoints, it's got bonus points you can find along the way if you're willing to drive out of the way a little bit. And then at the end of each night, we have a large social, um, like the one coming up. We're going to actually go to the Chaparral Museum. We're going to go to Carol Shelby's Museum in that's, Vegas. That, that, but that's going to be after the liquor store. <laughs> well, well, I mean, that's up to you, Don. I mean, we, we know where you, people like to go. <laughs> yeah. um, but that gives us time each evening. The... Uh, to These decompress. people like to drive a lot, but the last one we gave away six cars to single parents. It's um, our goal this time is to give 15 vehicles away. So uh, trying to give back to society a little bit and have fun while we're doing it. Well, clearly with 15 cars means you need to have 15 drivers. No, you, Well, 15 actually, teams. so what we do is we do teams of four in the vehicles. So you've got a team of four that makes the trip. And then when we get this example, when we get to Vegas this time, those four people will donate their cars uh, to JC Supercars, and they'll hop on a plane and fly back to Houston and done. So it's kind of a one-way ticket. And I like the change you made this year 
of teams of four because the first one you did, you went Seattle and landed in yep. Houston, but it was only two. Well, if you're giving a car to a family, a Mazda Miata is not quite the kind of car you want to give to a family. <laughs> so Correct. going teams of four, I think, is a great idea because you're getting a much more roomy vehicle for a family to travel in. Well, it also lowers the barrier of entry too, right? I mean, you've got to pay, you know, two fifty a person entry fee is a lot more acceptable than five hundred dollars a person. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so because the, because there is an entry fee for it. So when is this year's event? This year's event is uh, April 9th. We will be leaving from the old train depot here in Alvin, Texas. Uh, we'll make Midland that night, uh, which we'll go to the Chaparral Museum. We've got five hours of time there. Leave the next morning at seven a.m. Headed off through Roswell up to Gallup, New Mexico. We'll stay at the El Rancho Haunted Hotel that night. Uh, we've got a couple Route 66 tours lined up as well. Then that following Sunday morning, we'll take Route 66 from Gallup all the way into Las Vegas, uh, another 440 miles. And we will end Sunday, hopefully about 2.33 o'clock, all going well, right? No cars well, breaking. Well, like I'm just going to say, uh, do you have uh, some sort of a <laughs> sweeper vehicle? Yes, yeah, something to help along the way because these yeah, are hoopty we've vehicles. Got two. We've got our sweep vehicle. So my truck is uh, outfitted as we use it for the Mexico road racing, um, completely outfitted with all tools, spares, jacks, compressor. And we've got two mechanics riding at that run sweep. And then we will have Haggerty back on board for their roadside assistance. So Haggerty. Uh, insurance, as we all know, with Angelica um, is working on getting the rest of that finalized. And is Angelica going to go on the rally on the rally again this year? She's trying. She was trying to get a team of four last time. She technically had a team of five. They were the ones that created the vision of, hey, larger team makes this a whole lot easier. Um, you don't think driving 600 miles a day and running around and chasing scavenger hunt style, chasing things down will wear you out. But on day three, uh, people were were uh, crying a little bit. Yeah. yeah, blame it on the scavenger hunt. Yeah, not exactly. The evening, not the evening indulgences. No, and then we're a little mischievous with the scavenger hunt. So we'll, we limit it to five words maximum that we're going to give you as a clue. So you have to take those five words that we give you and figure out where we want you to go and what we want you to find. And then you'll post it to the app called Roadster, which is a, uh, call it Facebook for cars is the easiest way. It's just car people, just car stuff. And uh, it allows us to hold an individual event in there. And for those people that want to follow along on the event, um, see where all the cars are. You can actually see live tracking, how far apart cars are. You can estimate speeds, uh, but you can't really tell how fast they're going. Um, there was one person that was remote, well warned uh, from the rally day one. Uh, day two, uh, they were removed from points and told not to continue with the rally. So uh -oh. <laughs> things happen. Well, yeah, things happen, adult. things happen. But, but yeah. you know, you've obviously got it. You mentioned a couple of the stops, you know, the Chaparral Museum, uh, uh, the Shelby Museum, and the Haunted Hotel thing. So, obviously, along Route 66, some of these scavenger hunt type things for points are going to be involved with some historical type things. So, what are the points, you know, what are you working for to get the points? Well, the points, basically, so we can get a ranking of where teams show up in the end. Um, who did the most effort, who covered the most miles. With that, we designate first, second, and third place. We award trophies. And this year, we should have a small cash prize uh, that we're hoping turns around and gets donated to the charity that we're working for. That's what we always ask them to do. Uh, but the so many people are competitive and want to be ahead. There was no way to do it without doing points and scoring. Yeah, you got to have some yeah. way to measure it. Yeah, and we do these, uh, I call them quirky trophies. Basically, as all the cars we work on, we get lots of fun broken parts, <laughs> and uh, we save those. And uh, one of the trophies for this one, we got the inside of an AC compressor, which you don't think is very special. <laughs> uh, but unless you've never seen one, it looks like the landing gear to a UFO. Oh. So we figure since we're going through Roswell, compressor yep. landing gear, and then we'll have two old uh, 55 Chevy hubby hubcaps to make it look like a little flying saucer on top. <laughs> oh, so cool. How cool is that? The prize this time is going to be pretty coveted. Should stay at the uh, little alien, little alien. Is in, there in is there one? That, is that called that? Little alien, yeah. Yes, there in Roswell. Is. <laughs> yeah. it, it might be on the sky. I've never been to there, but I've been to that museum in Roswell. It's pretty cool. So are, yeah. you, are you guys going to Storm Area Fifty One? <laughs> yeah, I don't think there'll be any storming. There's uh, definitely a, a pass there, and it definitely is part of the scavenger hunt. Is uh, for those people that want to go there, we want to award them points for stuff that they want to do along the route as well. That's his. Once in a lifetime thing, get a chance to do stuff you've wanted to do. 
um, and shove it all into a three-day weekend, then hop on a short flight home back to Houston. And then the other cool thing is Route si- or the historic Route 66, because truly yeah. Route 66 doesn't exist anymore. But my gosh, what a road! Um, with such a car history and automotive history, you know, originally, you know, it started in Chicago, went across country and ended at the Santa Monica Pier and, uh, hmm. you know, kind of comes through Missouri. My, my experience with it was Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle yeah. when I lived up there. Yeah, you know. there's a lot of stuff in Missouri, too, on that. You know, Richard, that's something to think about. What would it take to go the entire length of Route 66? Doesn't it start outside of Chicago? Yeah, yeah. Chicago to yeah. California. Chicago. Yeah. I would start in Joliet just because I'm a blues brother nut too. So, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I can actually Ruth? see you driving the uh, being the lower Fury, drive. The Fury oh. with the with the speaker on the roof. <laughs> Get me one. I'm in. Uh, the Route 66 discussion has happened many times. The bigger issue of Route 66 is so much of it now is through um, community areas and commercial right. business areas. Stoplight to stoplight. Like light. Springfield is is almost all. I mean, it'd take you a couple of hours to get through Springfield if you tried to do that. Well, it was like he was talking Oklahoma. You get in the middle of Oklahoma City through mm-hmm. Yukon Bethany. I mean, it's forty five minutes to crawl through there. Right. It would just really slow the tour down. But we're uh, we're looking at how to pick up some stops and still stay off the interstates. That's the goal with all of these. The less interstate time, the happier we seem to be, and get you out in some parts of the country. You get to see fun things and. Take you a seventeen hundred dollar car and go have a good time with four friends. Make sure one of them is a mechanic, and uh, <laughs> we have a good time. Well, I thought it was funny because I kind of followed your on the app um, your Seattle uh, wrench rally, and I guess people just showed up in Seattle and bought a car. You know, yeah, kind of sight thing. unseen, and yep, ended up buying about three two of them. Of them. Sight unseen. Yeah. See, I the thought that was the best yeah. story. They had uh, they had arranged for her to meet them at the airport. They landed, walked out, handed her six hundred dollars for a Honda Civic. Uh, came with an extra set of tires because it had snow tires on it at the time. They showed up at the drivers' meeting thirty minutes later. They go to sleep that night. Get the next day, drove it from there to here. Only thing they did was they changed one tire because they lost a tire um, at the Texas state line. Other than that, they didn't do a thing. Changed the oil, water, nothing. Just opted in it, and drove. That's confidence. But by the but, same but you also token, had some people the car didn't go fifty feet. The first one they bought, it, it this, failed yeah, almost is, immediately. This is true, but we, we don't want to bring that up. <laughs> I Buying understand. a diesel Mercedes and you've never owned one before is a bad plan. Yeah. Well. So if there are people who are uh, watching us today that want to join the wrench rally, how can they uh, get in contact with you and sign up? Because I think you, you still have teams is, uh, open, right? Yeah, Facebook, Instagram is the quickest, easiest way. Um, and all those have my phone number attached to it and email. Uh, so you can get a hold of me and get involved um, looking for any assistance, anybody that wants to come along. Or if you want to join a team, we've got a couple teams that are two to three people. So they're looking for additional um, manpower uh, to join them and go have a good time for a weekend. So, Richard, so it's $1,000 to enter. Correct. So uh, what about what all I mean, what about the hotels and all those kind of arrangements? So when we do the events where we fly out of town, we usually include the first night of hotel. Since most are leaving from Houston, right. we're not actually putting a hotel in this one because we don't know who all is going to make it to Midland that night. <laughs> okay. Fair the enough. Hope, True. The hope is everybody <laughs> makes it. Um, but what but happens if they don't hotels. make it? Richard, what happens if they don't make it that night? What Do you wait the for su- them? Or? The suggestion is, is you rent a car from Enterprise or Hertz and you hop in and follow along. The other thing we've seen teams do is go out and buy another car. In a small town, just go out and plop down another seven hundred dollars, buy another car, and jump in and go. I was going to say because the the rates that uh, the car rental companies are charging these days would probably wind up seven hundred dollars if you did the you know <laughs> from one yeah. point A to yeah, point B and way. drop the car off. Don't car dealerships yeah. give you a three day grace? So, okay, take it for the weekend, oh, take it, and then go to a dealership, get one for three days, and then drive it. And well, I think the objective is to donate the car. So you can you still do this, that when you get to uh, you can still do Las that. Vegas. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, yeah. And, and then tell us about the, the you know donating the car. You're, you you'd mentioned an organization that you're going to donate through, and uh, what are they going to do with, with the cars once they receive them? So what this organization does, they're based in Phoenix, and they were part of our first rally. I know them through a couple of business acquaintances, but they donate a car a month to a single mother. Uh, so we're just going to be donating our cars to support them. Now some of the cars that get chose. Um, to participate in our rallies, like let's say the limo we had last time. 
Well, a single parent doesn't need the limo. Uh, they also don't need the two-door Audi that was there, the two-door Mercedes. So those cars get donated, and they end up selling them at auction. And then that money goes directly to the charity to help fund them on donating other cars. We did have the three minivans, which went straight to parents. Um, all three of those vans were serviced by Christian Brothers Automotive. Um, then Christian Brothers donated all three of those vans the following week uh, to single parents here in Houston last, on the last rally. And that was so probably your your uh, trigger for go, going to four passengers in the vehicle, just absolutely. The, how well the absolutely. minivans are received. It just it pushed it more in the direction that we want to go, which is the ultimate goal of giving more cars to single parents, both male and female, that just help help other people out. Well, what you a know, great cause. And uh, uh, go ahead, Mark. I was going to say, Richard, you know, last week we talked to uh, a group up in Conroe called God's Garage. If y'all do another event that comes thing. back here, you know, uh, they they do basically the same thing you're talking about doing. They help maybe a single mother that can't get her car fixed. They fix it. It's a group of volunteers. They're working in Conroe. Or they'll uh, take a car. And, you know, I think they even talked about, you know, if it was, wasn't worth fixing, they would sell it and help her get another car. But they yep. do some things with uh, single parents, military uh, families that are deployed. So, uh, you know, if you if you come back this way with something in an event, you might look at them as well as for a, yep. a way to Absolutely. deliver some cars. Always looking to spread the love around. Cool. Sounds All like right. a lot of fun. <clears throat> and if you're just joining us, uh, this is the uh, In Wheel Time Car Show. We're live today from uh, Studio A in Houston, USA. And uh, so while we're talking to you, we haven't even mentioned the yellow car that's behind you there at the Apex Auto Works. And I thought that maybe we could kind of shift gears a little bit and find out what you got going on in the gay garage. Well, this one is almost done. This is a 73 Ford Falcon GT 351. Sweet. So I may pause for a second. And Conrad, you want to give me the history on this car? You want me to do it? <laughs> oh, this is the... Is this the Aussie car? This is the Aussie car. Oh, so my gosh. Four speed, um, right-hand drive, 351. Yeah. Cleveland from the factory. I had uh, seen, I guess, a sister car to this. Is it the same owner? I'd seen a sister car to this at one of my shops, a blue and white one, and it is it is the car that Mad Max used in in uh, the original movie that, you know, with the big blower and stuff sticking yeah. out of the hood. So. That's when I saw that I took a bunch of pictures of it. I guess Richard had seen it on online and told me, yeah, he he kind of knew who the the owner was. Yeah, the guy had more than yeah, one. He's of got them. three of them. So this one, the cool thing about this one is this is basically your premium edition. Is the easy way to put it. Top tier, uh, seven hundred and ten of these made in Australia in nineteen seventy three, um, and it's one of supposedly four in the U S. That's the actual GT three fifty one. Well, I love the hood because the hood is very reminiscent of the 73 Mach 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I saw the hood. That's what I was thinking. But, you know, there was what, no steering wheel over there. What I'm from the firewall back, it is Torino. Okay. That's yeah, cool. I was looking firewall at the seat. Ford, it is Mustang. Yeah, I was looking at darned. the C-pillar when you were sitting there talking. I'm going, that's, that's Torino. Um, yeah. And then when you said Falcon, I'm like, huh? But, okay, well, that makes sense. Second. Yeah, but it's a mid-size so, course, car. What we would call a mid-size car, Chevelle Cutlass size car. Um, that car is huge. <laughs> <laughs> it is huge. I had a friend of mine had one of those. So that car a lot of fun though. And we are you? That are, car. It's close. It should be done. Hopefully in the next probably month. Um, we're well, at the point of one more layer of clear, and then we start uh, putting the interior back together. And it, it just going back stock, basically. Or yeah, it's stock. The uh, last one at Sotheby's sold of this was three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. Sweet. Ouch. But wait a minute. Do, it, uh, did Great. I not see roll bars in the back of that? Nope, no roll bars in that one. Okay. Although when it showed up, it had mounting plates for where roll bars were. That's some of the stuff that we took out and fixed and new floor pan areas to cover okay. all that up. So it's going to be a street car. Yeah, this street car. I think this one's probably going to be more of his. Uh, he gets together, enjoys it for six, seven months, and then sells it, passes it on down the road. So, what kind of restoration was done on it? Was frame off, rotisserie, uh, any added mods I don't, to I it? I don't do any of the rotisserie or the frame off, but on this one, basically, it's old school unibody car. Um, so, it's still subframe stuff, but the it was taken completely apart. Um, when this one showed up, there was a spot on the roof that I could put my fist through 
where it had rusted out. Um, wow. So all metal, you know, patchwork, everything back in, grind fill, grind fill. E, the package tray was rusted through. Um, this car would not have been worth restoring had it not been the GT351. Yeah, so, so the unique. The only thing made it worth doing. So yeah. did you just do all fab work for it, or did you go buy Torino, or, uh, uh, Torino parts through uh, uh, Ford to patch? This owner wouldn't let us do any of that. It had to be, if it was a part that I was replacing, he would order the part from Australia. Oh, wow. Um, cut out that section on a regular base falcon that was down there and then send that to us. Holy cow. It's like, yeah, the section of the roof, we got a quarter of the roof area on the left rear. Um, when it got here, we trimmed it down more, made it clean, transferred our size over, cut it out, and welded it in. Package tray was one of the hardest things to find. Um, I guess it set for a long time without a back window in it, but the package tray had rusted out. I'd never welded in a package tray before. That was a first for me. Um, whole lot of spot welds on the inside of that one. What a total pain that would be. Oh, yeah. Ugh. It was I'd not fun. Have to be a I'm contortionist. Sure the made it a lot easier. But. Yeah, have to be a contortionist to do it. So, though yeah. this is a low production model, the vehicle itself was huge production in Australia. Correct. Um, you know, that is the. Uh, um, kind I of would have never guessed that. No, never yeah. guessed that in a million years with a 351. Because I mean, that's a that that goes with the Chevy SS and all the other well, ones. That that model being the 351, but they they offered that same body, but not with the like the SS modifications like a regular Malibu would have been. Right. They made they made probably millions of them through the years. Huh. Um, Something equivalent to like a 307 or right. there is some sort of. And base now motor. I think they're all they're all completely out of production in Australia. I know uh, Holden's not there; doesn't really exist anymore. Um, they, they're not building anything in Australia. Yeah. So the Australia Supercar Series, which is where this probably ran back in the 70s, and was yeah, probably. I don't, I don't know much about the actual racing history on that platform, but I know it was the largest motor offered in this platform. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, what else you got in the shop, Richard? Um, stuff that you might like. Um, we got the Miata, uh, which is Drumworks car. This is just one we're making more pretty. But the one that's interesting, probably to you guys, is the uh, vintage Mini. Oh so, my! Oh, wow! Original vintage Mini Cooper S. Um, we had to add some roll bars to it. This is one of our local C bar, Corinthian Vintage Racing Association cars. Uh, 1275 to give a comparison the wheels on it are 10 inches I was gonna say tens tens well look who just took my car review <laughs> yeah, my lawnmower has bigger tires than this um the car itself though uh at msr it runs as fast as the uh, miatas do so it's fully prepped it's been a race car since 1982 i was gonna say that that yeah, car what, looks like a ton of fun but what's the car weigh about 1400 pounds um, actually, I don't, I don't oh, even it, look. And it's right-hand drive, too. That yeah, right-hand drive. Get used this to. is a converted right-hand drive. Almost like well. a Legends. Yeah, it, about my that Legends size. about this size, yeah. in all honesty. <laughs> Except yeah. that was legends a production a <laughs> That was a production car in Great Britain. Yeah, it's an amazing car. So this one goes home today. And then, I mean, CRX, um, of course, we've always got some of those around. The other one's kind of cool is... Uh, but he up on the north side, runs spring automotive. He's got an Audi TT. Cool and car. He's got one that's what they call an R RS7, I think. Five-cylinder, big turbo, makes like 500 horse. Wow. wow. But, uh, yeah, this one we're working on. Yeah, I know. For those of you that have been around the shop enough, take a look at the bumper reinforcement integrated into the intercooler. Oh, Don't my Don't hit any parking blocks or bump the garage. Wow. Yeah, really? Uh, that'd be an expensive bump. I like the hood yeah. scoop, too. Well, yeah. Richard, uh, we sure appreciate the time you've taken this morning for us, as we always do. Good luck on the wrench rally. I, I, are we, we going to talk to you before you go? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, I think, right. I think we got yeah. one more setup, one more okay. update coming. All right. Well, we will talk to you then before you leave on the wrench rally and uh, find out who all's uh, involved. And, and best of luck between now and then. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Be good. Thank Thanks, you so Richard. much. Uh, Richard Tomlin with Apex Auto Works. Okay, time now for this hour's cruise in calendar. You got 60 seconds. See the clock there? 60 right, seconds. So uh, this weekend <laughs> is uh, good guys in, uh, at Lone Star Nationals up at uh, Texas Motors, uh, Texas 
Speedway. And uh, our friend Randy, Randy Borcheting with Paint House is up there with his Ranchero. Uh, tomorrow is a Spring Break Car Cruise at, at, at a 27700 I-10 Katy. Uh, and that is the, uh, uh, the, the kickoff to the 2K t uh, TX event here in town. Sunday is the Shiner Car Gathering at Rustic Road in Kingwood. Uh, and then uh, next weekend is Tailpipes and Tacos at, at Loopy Tortillas yep. off of uh, Kingsland in 99. Yeah. Is that 60 seconds? Um, you got 10 seconds. That's okay. I'll give you that 60 seconds. You can have the 10 seconds back. <laughs> Rudy's, well, Thursday is Rudy's Rudy's barbecue meet uh, up in Tomball. Off now I'm going to turn you into a radio guy before the end of the earth. Doubtful. All right. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, time now for this hour's car review. Take a look at the 2021 Chevy Tahoe. All new from the ground up. Available trim levels include the LS, which is the base model, the LT, the RST, the Z71, the Premier, and the High Country. I had the two-wheel drive RST, which stands for Rally Sport Truck. Bet you didn't know that. This is a standard SUV with now three rows of seating. It is bigger in every dimension. Uh, so just wanted you to I know like that. I like the change they made to the front. Seven end. passengers in this particular one. Fully redesigned for 21. This is the fifth generation Tahoe. RST comes with 22-inch wheels, unique front fascia, and black trim. Special RST seats also uh, are applied to this with contrasting stitching. Exterior features include bigger than the outgoing Tahoe in every way, as I mentioned. Sharp-looking front fascia, RST unique to the trim. Uh, Forward-leaning C-pillar, sharp yet conservative-looking rear end as well. Overall look gets two thumbs up from me. As uh, far as improvements are concerned, nothing. Congrats to the design department at Chevrolet. Interior highlights include an all-new dash design. Uh, friendly to use, looks great too. Huge center console is big enough to hide small children in. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to access third row seat, which is something new because it used to be d difficult to get back there. Uh, easy to use infotainment system, too. Cargo trunk room. Uh, it's much bigger than it used to be, but still limited with the third row seats up, as you can imagine. It's a short wheelbase. Uh huh. Uh, it's much larger, obviously, with the seats down. Ginormous with both rows stored is the interior size. What I liked the Tahoe now bigger than the old Suburbans. Mm. Is it really? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Um, actually, if there were anything done with the improvement to this, I would offer Chevrolet the idea of maybe offering a queen mattress option uh, <laughs> for, for the back back Like there. the old uh, Nash, Ron yeah. Stein owns. That's it. Three liter, turbocharged, straight six diesel. 277 horsepower. That's a, I don't know if that's the diesel. Is that the that's diesel? The diesel. That's, the that's it. Okay. Uh, 460 pound-feet of torque, 10-speed automatic transmission. Uh, it will tow up to 8,200 pounds. That's pretty good. And it will haul up to 1,625 pounds. Miles per gallon, and this is where it all pays off. 21 miles per gallon city is what it's rated. Highway 28 for a combined of 24. I got 23.5 over 444 miles. Uh, and it, it it performed well, flawless. Ten speed in the diesel. The thing I really liked about it was, you know, I heard you start it. You can't, you can't tell. tell it's a diesel. No. no. Uh -uh. Ride and handling. A new independent rear suspension takes the ride to a new luxury level. I mean, it makes the world of difference in this. Independent rear suspension on the Tahoe. Really cool. Uh, one of the few body-on-frame SUVs left, left on right, the market. Right. Base trim price, 57100 Price is tested, 67335 Base bad. model price, 52135 as far as competitors, the Ford Expedition starts at $50,720, GMC Yukon fifty-five six ten, and the Chevy Traverse, and I throw this in there because they're kind of similar in size, but remember the Traverse front -wheel drive. is a front-wheel drive or and it's drive. a unibody, mm -hmm. whereas the Tahoe clearly is a body on frame. But the huh. Chevy Traverse starts at thirty. Nine ninety-five, and that is our review 
above you, the Chevy I, Tahoe. I think that, that in my in my view, all out appearances seem that the Tahoe is larger than the Traverse. And we had what well, Kathy and I looked at that vehicle last week when he had it. It's a beautiful vehicle. Yeah. In fact, we recommended it to my daughter. It, <laughs> it, it's, it's the third row is just amazing. And, I, and I really do like the change they made to the front end of the truck. You know, it, it got rid of that. That squarish body that the previous generation it was, was. I don't know that it was ugly. It was, it was, it was plain. Her, it was hearse like. It was, yeah, yeah. Um, and this one, they really and made with the some straight huge body changes. lines, right. particularly you throw that over on the suburban and stuff. It it's exactly. I'm what telling, it like. if you're a Tahoe fan, you're going to love this thing. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Pandora, Amazon, and Podcast Addict. In Wheel Time Car Show continues after this quick break. Stay with us. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, March 20th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Lupi Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all at one location. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, March 20th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Get your ride ready, and we'll see you at the Tailpipes and Tacos Saturday morning cruise in, March 20th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy, weather permitting. Is your business your company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? Well, you found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is Jeff at nwheeltime.com. If you're in charge of your company's small, medium, or large business anywhere in the U.S., let the On Hold Company help you retain customers and promote your business on your telephone system. Promote special sales or company info when placed on hold. The On Hold Company provides custom on hold messages with professional male or female voices, licensed background music with no long-term contract, no monthly recurring bill, and updates your messages as needed. Call the On Hold Company at 713-223-HOLD or go to onhold.net. 